All right, Tularinos, here is the second part of the LaGrange engine show tool haul, as promised. This is the toolbox I got at the show. It was $3. It's aluminum. It's really cool. has a couple of minor issues, but um, let's see what, I, what goodies are hidden inside. First things first, I got an old vintage... Uh, Bicycle bell. I know it's not a tool, but it's cool. This was an exciting find. It is number two Morris taper. Uh, Jacob's chuck, drill chuck with key. And uh, this will go in the tailstock or spindle of my uh, old craftsman lathe. So Super excited to find this. Uh, let's see if you guys can read it there. It says Jacobs England 13 HD 8 slash 10, 1 half inch by 20, 8, uh, 1028, 1.5 13 millimeter. So, pretty nice. Very excited to find that. I paid $20 for that. Uh, I expect to get a lot of usage from that. And there's actually huh, there's a patent number on the key. So I'll look that up and show you the patent. And I got here this nice little small nail puller slash tack puller. It is Miller's Falls. Greenfield, Massachusetts. Made in the USA. And then, I don't know if you guys can see this. You can see it says Miller's Falls in the handle, stamped in the handle. Pretty cool. I call that a gem. I got a leather punch. Uh, I know these aren't uh, super rare or anything. Uh, C.S. Osborne, Newark, New Jersey. Um, it's a little odd that it hits a little off-center here, but um, I don't know if I could straighten that out somehow, but it just seems super heavy-duty and really well-made, so I couldn't leave it there. You know, you know how it is. This was just a cool find. Uh, J.C. Penny. So, I used to have a 1970s JCPenney lawn tractor, number 3187, USA. So, seems like a very well-made 3 8 wrench, just a neat wrench. Alright, super adjustable, patented USA, 6 inch. J.H. Williams and Co. And it is so well made. Very little slack in the jaw. Uh, compared to uh, the guy that was selling this, he had a nice little collection of them for sale. And this one was magnificent compared to the other ones there. Um, and it was, they were all the same price, you know. And it was just like, uh, he wasn't paying attention to the quality, I guess. Next item is a blue point feeler gauge, which is essentially like snap on if I remember correctly. And it is a beautiful feeler gauge set. Needs a little de rusting, but uh, it's all there and all the, uh, all the pieces are in great shape. Nothing's all bent up and it's just beautiful. Now this was cool. Um, it is a dill, uh, 10 uh, to 135, so I believe that's the range of pressure it will read. It says Super Pressure Tester with a patent number. So pretty cool. The dill manufacturing company, Cleveland, Ohio. Couldn't pass that up. It was asking 15 but I was able to get it for 10. 
Okay, so this next item was like a multi-tool and uh, looks like it used to have a little nail puller, tack puller, and a screwdriver tip here, and a wire cutter here, and it has a replaceable jaw, which is what I was attracted to, why well, I was attracted to this one. Whenever they have a replaceable jaw, then you feel like, oh, they intend this to be a very uh, long-lived tool. And uh, so it's like a pipe wrench and a wire cutter and just versatile multi-tool. And it's very hard to read there. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to make that out. But uh, it is an odd company name. I honestly can't read it right now. I looked it up and I will uh, I'll put it on the screen because at the moment I'm, I can't read it. But I did figure it out. Okay, I had to do a little rearranging there because I couldn't really reach it <laughs> very effectively. Um, so, here, next item is this uh, neat old wrench, USA Nickel, uh, molybdenum, 3 quarter and 7 eighths. Has the patent number, and I've looked up this patent before, this is a design patent. But, uh, USA Nickel makes some interesting, thick, heavy-duty, uh, feel like very well-made wrenches. So I think I'm going to start trying to collect a little set of these. I've got at least a few of them now, so that's a cool one. Cool find. Alright, this, uh, I figured it was some kind of wire stripper, but um, it is an early model. See, it's got a little blade in here. And uh, it's made for Rural C Wire, which is Rural Communications Wire. It's K. Miller T and M Company, Springfield, Massachusetts. And uh, it's just kind of a neat old early tool. And so this was used for uh, splitting and stripping the ends of old phone line, uh, possibly telegraph wire, but I believe it was early phone line. And Rural C wire is still wire that's used today. Uh, I looked it up. Kind of interesting. Neat old tool, a lot of history to it, I think. Here I got another uh, little feeler gauge. This is a Dunlap. It says, Finest Swedish Steel. It says, Made in USA. Of Swedish Steel, apparently. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so here's the aluminum tray. The handle has a little bow to it, a little bend. I could probably straighten that out without too much trouble. But for being aluminum, it's actually got some heft to it. It's a pretty thick gauge. So, nice tray. All right, next items. Give herself a little more room here. I've got a damaged unfortunately because it's split here on the end it's got brass end caps and it's a grease gun where you rotate this knob and it drives the piston to push grease out of here and there's actually grease in it if I turn it grease starts to come out I was hoping to find some sort of markings on it uh, I cleaned it up a bit but I have not found any markings other than the E on the end here but uh, the way the handle is, and the Acme thread, and the brass ends, I just uh, kind of, you know, kind of liked it. So it was inexpensive. I think I gave five dollars for it. Crooked handle, half round rasp. Nothing super exciting, but uh, the guy was selling them uh, things for like fifty cents. Wards it says wards on it, but it looks like it would clean up nice. And uh, I've got some much bigger rasps, rasps, but I don't know that I had one this small. So, here's a big handle for turning a socket or something, 
it has seen some serious use in its time. Uh, there is a logo up here. It's like a M inside of a circle inside of a diamond. It says 331. If anybody's familiar with that logo, please let me know in the comments because I have no idea. But very heavy duty. Alright, and then uh, $5 for this little pipe vise. And I thought it was unusual because it's one sided. So, you know, it's not super heavy duty, but uh, com appears to be complete. No breaks or damage. It says the uh, handy manufacturing company, Bridgeport, Connecticut. The handy vise. So, I mean, it still cranks. Obviously, it needs a good cleanup and, and some paint. But the, the teeth on the jaws look to be in pretty good shape. I don't think this has seen a whole lot of use. So, neat little pipe vise. For $5, couldn't pass it up. And last but not least, get this beautiful large lathe file. It needs a good cleaning. But it's not rusty. It still feels pretty grabby. It's got a massive smooth handle and ferrule. It says Oberg. There. Oberg, Sweden. So, a very heavy duty, very heavy, very high quality feeling Swedish made lathe file. So, I thought, there again. If I get my lathe up and running, this will come in super handy. So those were my gems from the show. I uh, I didn't spend a ton of money on any of this stuff. It was all quite reasonable. And uh, I think I, I had a good haul. You guys let me know what was your favorite in the comments. And uh, I'll see you again soon.